In this lesson, we'll get an introduction to editable geometry and how we can manipulate their sub-object modes to begin the modeling process. Now, before we begin our project, I think it's really, really important to have a solid understanding of how editable geometry behaves in order to create some stunning 3D geometry. So with that said, let's go ahead and create some primitives in our scene so we can actually discover how we can convert it to an editable geometry to start the modeling process. So we're going to go to the create panel and we're going to make sure that we're under geometry because this is where our 3D primitives are actually held. And then we're going to go to just a box. You can use really any primitive that you want here. But I'm going to drag out a box so I'm just going to use my left mouse button, hold it down and drag out the base of this box. Once I have a desired size, I'm going to go ahead and release that left mouse button and you'll notice that as we're moving our mouse up and down, it's giving us a height for our box. Now to actually finalize the height, we'll click one time with our left mouse button and now the box is finalized. Now what I want to do at this point is go ahead and maximize this viewport. So I'm going to do that just so we can see this a little bit easier. And what I really like to do whenever I start the modeling process is show my edge faces on my model because this really shows me how this model is made up. So if I hit F4 on my keyboard, you'll see the edge faces turns on and you can see them on top of the model. Now this really allows you to see how this piece of geometry is really made. Okay, So let's go ahead and go to our modify panel and start editing this geometry. So if I go to my Modify panel, you'll notice that this box is just a box. It's really not an editable piece of geometry just yet. The only thing that I can edit at this point is the length, width, and height, as well as any segments on this box. Okay, So let's go ahead and convert this over to an editable piece of geometry and, str and try to work this out here. So let's go ahead and right click. We're going to go to Convert to and you'll notice that we get some different selections that we can choose from. We can convert this to an editable mesh, but what we're going to use is editable poly. Now, editable poly has a lot more tools than editable mesh, and so that's why we're going to use it. More often than not, inside of 3ds Max, you're actually going to be using editable poly. So let's go ahead and choose editable poly. And you'll now notice that this is no longer a box. It is now an edible poly piece of geometry. Okay, So whenever we have an edible poly, we can actually access the different pieces of this geometry. And those different pieces are called sub-objects. So if I expand out my edible poly, you can see that we have vertices, edges, borders, polygons, as well as elements uh, of these different sub-object modes. Okay. So let's go ahead and discover each one of these. Well, actually, I'm just going to talk about three of these. I'm going to talk about vertex first. We're going to talk about edge. And then we'll talk about polygon as well, because these are the major sub-object modes that you'll be dealing with during the modeling process. So let's go to vertex. And you'll notice that whenever we highlight vertex or activate vertex mode, you'll see that we can click on the different points of this geometry. And these are called vertices. Now, whenever we are moving vertices around, we are moving the smallest point possible on an editable piece of geometry. Now, notice the behavior. You'll notice that whenever we are moving this vertex, we are also adjusting the edges that are connected to this vertex. Okay? So you'll notice that the one below it is getting longer, as well as these are changing direction. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and move over to edge. And we've kind of touched on this just a little bit. But if we select an edge, we can move this. Whoop, let me grab that again. We can move this up and down. And you'll notice that this is now moving this corner as well as this corner. So an edge is actually made up of at least two vertices on each end. So you'll notice that as I'm editing this, I'm actually editing a little bit more of the geometry than compared to vertex mode. So let's go ahead and move on up to polygon mode. And let me select a polygon here. And you'll notice that this is going to move four edges at the same time, or even four vertices at the same time. 
So what we're doing here is we're actually added, uh, editing more of the mass. Now whenever we're working with polygons during the modeling process, we're actually trying to edit the major masses of the object. So what we're trying to do is just trying to get a rough idea of this object that we're trying to create. So let's say we're trying to create a trash can. We can move polygons around to get just kind of a rough idea of the look of it. And then we'll move into edge mode and vertex mode to get some of the finer details out of our 3D geometry. Now what I want to talk to you about right now are some of the different terms that you're going to hear whenever we're working with polygons. Okay, So with this polygon selected, you may hear me say, OK, let's go ahead and select this triangle. Now, all I'm talking about is selecting a polygon that has three sides, Okay, a triangle. Now, you might also hear me talk about, let's select this quad or this polygon. And basically what I'm saying is we're selecting a polygon with four sides. Now a quad is something that we really want to strive for during our modeling process. We want to try and keep all polygons quads as much as possible because this is really going to help out whenever we start smoothing some of our different objects. And we'll talk about smoothing in, in the later lessons. Okay. Now another term that you might hear is called n-gons. And an n-gon is basically a polygon that has more than four sides. So whenever we have n-gons, we could have five, six, you know, even 20 sides on a polygon. And this could be really destructive, uh, especially if this model is going to be used for animation. So whenever we have n-gons, that, that one n-gon may tear up, it may pinch in weird places. So we really, really want to strive for quads whenever we're modeling. OK, so in this lesson, we've really taken a look at editable geometry and how we can manipulate some of those different sub-object modes and how they behave. And in the next lesson, we're going to get an introduction to splines and how we can use them during the modeling process.